Hey guys, Kev here, and I have a pretty damn cool knife to show you. This is the Vosteed Ankylo Prototype. So this has what I believe they call the V Anchor Lock. It is very, very cool. Um, I actually just got done doing the cut testing video. Uh, you will get a little surprise at the end there where I batoned it because somebody did ask me to baton with this knife to test the lock integrity. And I am happy to say there was no issue with that at all. I didn't, you know, baton it through a whole piece of wood. I gave it like 10 good smacks, got it stuck in the wood. You'll see, it'll all be at the end of the video, will be the cut test footage and the uh, baton footage right after that. So you can check that out. And I'm just gonna quickly clean this blade up. Um, so you can see here after the cut testing, the black wash is still good. We cut cardboard, we cut rope, we cut zip ties, and we hammered it into wood. Um, the black wash still looks good. The edge is still clean. <clears throat> Let me grab, um, where did I, st okay, here. Grab some knife shield, and then I'll grab a piece of paper, and I will uh, check the edge on that. This is LMAX. I'm not positive what the HRC on this is, but I'm guessing it's somewhere around uh, 60 to 61, which is pretty good, <clears throat> good for LMAX. <clears throat> I think people would love to see it around 62, but uh, maybe they'll show us the uh, HRC when we uh, take a look at the Kickstarter page, which is now live. So this knife is now live on Kickstarter. I have a link right down below to the Kickstarter. It does help the channel if you use that link, so I would appreciate it if you're going to pick one up anyway um if you use that but they do have it up on kickstarter i'll show you that real quick now i guess some people are going to want to know like prices and stuff like that it is already funded basically instantly i'm filming this you can see it going up as i go uh this basically dropped i don't know an hour ago maybe so save ten dollars choose one uh you have $159. You have a ton of options, which is pretty cool. Uh, these are in aluminum and then LMAX blade steel, which I think is pretty good. If you get two, it's $310. Bucks. You save $28. Um, so originally it would be $338, and it's going to be $169 retail. Now let's see. Do they give us uh, details on HRC or anything like that? I'm guessing we might get that. So you have a little breakdown of the knife. I don't know if I'll do a disassembly in this video. Um, I'll probably do a separate one for that to show you guys. Um, here are some specs. I'm just trying to see a V anchor lock. I'm just trying to see if they have the HRC for you because I know some people are going to want to know this. Uh, magnet secured carry. Yeah, there's some kind of magnet in there that helps with the lockup, which is pretty crazy if you think about it. Here's a picture of it. Oh, that's cool to see. Man, that is definitely beefy. That is beefy for sure. Uh, LMAX. <clears throat> they just talk about the LMAX and 6061 uh, aluminum. That's not the heat treat. So it doesn't look like we're going to get uh, HRC on this guy. But my guess is it's going to be, you know, 59 to 61, which is pretty dang. Oh, 60 plus or minus two. So they're basically saying 58 to 62. Um, I would probably say it's going to be around 60 to 61. But um, you guys make your own determination. Here is a look at the specs. If you want that information, pause and read. All right, we are done with that, sorry. So you got all that information right out of the way. <clears throat> For those of you who don't wanna to listen to y'all boy ramble, let's grab that piece of paper. All right. <clears throat> so I did notice the edge. Well, now it's got a little bit of bite, so it might've just been while I was cutting, some stuff was stuck to it. So, 
So we might have a little bit of a hang up. Don't feel anything though. Don't feel anything. Let me just throw it on the strop for a second. It's possible that a piece of something got stuck on there. I don't know. I didn't do that much cutting, but I did slam this into wood, guys. I mean, you know, you hammer something into wood. I do think that's going to probably cause some issue. Let's just see if a five-second strop job can do anything here. So, seems like up front, it's still pretty sharp. But back here, we've lost a little bit, I guess. Um, I'm just going to hit this ceramic for a second. I just want to see if I can bring this back easy enough. I probably should have come up here and done this after the testing and then gone down and done the batoning. But I was right there and I just, you know, figured let's get that knocked out of the way. This is just a ceramic honing rod. Shout out to my boy O dot show. Basically, if the strop isn't bringing it back. You might be able to bring it back with the ceramic. And if this doesn't work, then you probably need a full sharpening. So let's just see. Yeah, definitely better. I think it's just, I have a bad angle on the paper. There you go. It's definitely much better if I cut right. I think this last little bit of edge is not doing too well. It could just be the angle I'm on. Yeah, and there it goes. But up here, it's like almost factory. So... Anyway, there you go. Brought it back pretty dang quick. So you could surmise either the batoning of wood did some damage to the apex of the edge. Not necessarily damaging the steel or anything, but just, you know, dulled it. Essentially, you're hammering that thing into wood. And I was using this portion of the blade, so it does make sense. That's probably what happened. And then a little bit of ceramic and uh, strop took me four seconds and I'm an idiot with this stuff. And I was able to get it back to uh, definitely EDC sharp. So you guys take that for whatever it's worth to you, but I think it's uh, I think it's fine, it's good to go. Yeah, it's sticky up here, just back here. It's, ah, it's even good back there. So I'm pretty sure this thing would uh, laser through some cardboard if I had some right here to test but I do not. All right, moving on. That is your information about the cutting. It felt fantastic when I was cutting. Um, it is an extremely ergonomic handle, uh, just really comfortable in hand, whether you're gripping it back here, which I would really never do unless I was trying to cut like cardboard that was, you know, getting up in the way there. But mostly I'm going to be gripping it like this. Where? As a left-handed person, that was my main concern. That's why I really wanted to do that cut testing video is will I depress this button and unlock the blade while I'm cutting, right? 
And the answer to that, at least for my large glove size hand, is no. There was no issue, actually. Because for the most part, if I'm cutting like that, I'm going to be gripping it like this. My thumb up here and my index finger down here. The pressure is top and bottom, and there's no pressure in the middle here, right? It might be resting on there, but it's not putting any pressure. Maybe if you're doing this kind of like hammer grip cutting, but even then, I am not disengaging it right now. I'm pushing it a little bit, so it's rocking slightly, but it's not disengaging. And then point number two for this is, look where my hands are, right? Look how much blade I'm enveloping down here and here. So I'm literally locking the knife open with my hand. Even if that lock did not work right now, this knife, I, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't close on me because I am the lock, right? I have about two inches of blade in my hand. So uh, is it ideal? left-handed no it's not ideal because you are near that button so i will definitely say it's not perfect left-handed because you can put a little pressure on it and get a little rock going so if that's gonna bother you then you probably want to avoid it as a lefty if you're just gonna carry this for edc cut some cardboard cut up some fruit use it for opening boxes and shit this is perfectly fine and it's super fidgety left-handed there are some downsides to uh being left-handed uh for this knife uh by the way there's no rock there's no anything this thing is an absolute bank vault with this lock it's very very cool it does seem to be slightly off center i didn't even notice that but i mean ever so slightly but it came out of the box that way and it's probably arguable um and this also is a prototype Big, big shout out to you and the team at Vosteed for allowing me to check this out early. That is extremely awesome. And I, uh, yeah, I'm grateful that I got to check it out before they released. Just awesome, right? Um, this one is in black aluminum. I believe it's 6061. Yeah, we saw that. Uh, black hardware, you have... Um, Brass accents, I believe those are titanium. This is titanium, but it's uh, anodized. I don't think that's actually brass. That, I believe, actually is a piece of brass back there. Do want to check if the hardware is titanium. Seems to be steel, but let's grab a driver and just confirm. T8, right here. Steel hardware. Um, I will probably just do a disassembly right after this and I'll post it up shortly after. Maybe I'll do that. I just don't want to have an 80 minute video, which is probably going to happen if I do that. <laughs> uh, you have a deep carry clip, but this is one of my gripes on this knife. I have a couple, uh, you know, the first one is just being left handed. They didn't really include us with this knife, right? So I think it would be super cool if the lock and this pivot collar were reversible. Like if you could get it where it matches up sidewise to this side, and then you could somehow reverse the lock so the button is on this side and the collar's over here, and then left-handed, you could use it like a righty. You know what I mean? I feel like that would be really cool if somebody did that or just make a few left-handed versions. I don't think with this kind of lock, it would be that hard to just reverse everything. Um, I don't know. I mean, that's a give and take situation. How many are you going to sell and all of that? Um, the other thing left-handed, there's no left-handed clip option. I have been told by somebody that, uh, Vosteed said they would try to do that on the second run. We'll see. Uh, but the clip in general is just not the best option. It's a steel fold over deep carry clip. It's nice and flush and everything. But it just seems out of place. Uh, I feel like this knife is kind of in between, right? Like, yeah, it's aluminum, but it's Elmax, which is premium. And you have nice titanium, uh, I'm pretty sure, titanium accents. So it kind of has a premium vibe to it, honestly. So I just expected this knife to have a milled pocket clip. I just think it would go better with a nice milled clip. And then you could just do a filler tab over here and boom, you have a lefty option. I just think that would be way better for this knife. 
Now, it seems like they were trying to keep the price down so that everybody could get one of these. You know, they're selling these for 160 bucks or whatever. So they had to cut costs somewhere, and this is where they did it on the clip. And they went with aluminum instead of titanium. So I understand the choice. <clears throat> so it's kind of like, yes, I want to complain about the clip, but I have to know if they did do that, then it would be a $200 knife instead of 170 I would like titanium, but then it would be a $250 knife, not 170 right? So you got to understand that when you're, when you're making those points. Now, honestly, I think aluminum does make sense for this, more sense. If you made this out of titanium, it would be a brick. This doesn't weigh too much. Like, it's not heavy. It's got a really good balance. It's got a great weight to it. Um, I don't know the weight. It's probably four ounces, four and a half ounces. So if you put it in titanium, you're talking about five or six ounces. Just not worth it, in my opinion. All right, the next thing on the clip is the location. I don't know why they put it here. I don't know if they're prioritizing this stupid lanyard, but you need to use this barrel screw for the clip. I don't know why they didn't just... Bring this up, put the clip right here, right? It would still angle. It would honestly, yeah, maybe it wouldn't angle straight at the pivot, but it would angle like this. Or get rid of this freaking lanyard thing. Put one of those, oh, you can't really. Yeah, you just put a standoff with a hole in it. Boom, you have a lanyard pit, right? You have a lanyard hole. If you put a, uh, if this barrel spacer just had a hole in it, now you have a lanyard spot. And then, or do it back here. Do this one with a hole in it, boom, lanyard. And then use this screw for the clip and move everything up because it just seems weird that it's down here. Like, why is it down here? And then they, and maybe that's why they didn't do a milled clip because they were like, shit, now we're down here. If we add a milled clip, there's going to be this much sticking out of the pocket. So we got to use this deep carry clip to bring it up to here. I don't know the answers to those things, but personally, I would much rather see a clip mounted here, have it be milled, have a filler tab, boom, done. So maybe on a second uh, version, they would do that. Um, so those are my little gripes, you know, left-handed, having this thing be your show side, essentially, is kind of ugly. You know, you righties, you get this cool button and everything. Uh, we get this clip and this ugly thing. So, you know, lefty, not the best option, but I'm left-handed and I love this thing. Uh, it's really, really cool. A lot of it has to do with the fidget factor and the lock, but the knife is super ergonomic. It is on the thicker side. That's something I've learned is with these pivot locks, they all seem to be thicker knives. So they have to fit more shit into the pivot area. So it just naturally has to be thicker. It's not like a super chunker, but it's 0.56 of an inch. So my like baseline is I want knives to be under half an inch, right? That's just what I want. I want it to be at or under half an inch and you're good to go. Um, like here is the fireball and you can see how much thicker this is, right? Almost a full scale thicker than the fireball, which isn't like a super thin knife right here's a cjrb pyrite button lock this one's pretty thin you have you do have a full scale thicker right so just so you know that that is a little bit of a thick knife this is a button lock penguin which is also pretty thin and you have most of that scale but the plus side is in hand, it's extremely comfortable. They have this really cool frag pattern. Um, they have some jimping right along the back here, all the way up here for the flipper tab. So let's talk about the action. We're pretty much done with ergos, right? I mean, you have a comfortable choke up grip, comfortable grip back here, large glove size hand. I fit the whole thing on, which is nice. Choked up, you have a lot left over. You have a, technically you also have like a choil here. Um, which honestly isn't even necessary. They could have brought that edge back, I think, some more, giving you more blade length because you could just choke up to here then. So maybe that's a thought on the next one too, is you could bring this back, have more edge. 
and then I would just choke up like this. As of now, I kind of choke up like this to get closer to the to the edge. You have jimping that runs along here. It's I think it's enough. I mean, you could go up a little further. That mark is for my hammer. It's not an issue. Um, but this is good. It's solid. The black wash is extremely well done. All right. Action. So you have a front flipper. You have a back flipper. You have a button and you have a hole for deployment. Now, the plus side with this lock is it actually has a detent. This is not a spring lock. As far as I know, it is not a spring lock at all. Well, we saw the pictures. When you push this, it pushes some kind of bar out of the way or whatever. So they have, I think, an actual detent in there. These liners, you can see a liner there. And I believe that's kind of your lock bar tab that's running up and into the pivot. Uh, so for whatever, however it works, there is a legitimate detent. Unlike that Riot PLXT I reviewed, that one was legitimately a spring lock, like a button lock. It sucked. I really don't like that knife at all. If you're going to get one of these pivot lock knives, this is the one, guys. Um, this is 10 times better than that Riot. telling you. Yes, it's from the Kickstarter. It's what, $50 more, $48 more. It's worth every one of those dollars. Trust me, you're upgrading to aluminum. You get a little bit of titanium. Uh, you're getting LMAX instead of fucking uh, Nitro V. Uh, and you're getting a real uh, detent. And you're getting, I think, a much stronger and much sec more secure lock. The way that Riot lock worked, everything was hinging on one little tiny bit of threading on the pivot screw. And that even had a spring around it. So I'm just waiting for those to strip out left and right. But uh, anyway, this is definitely the way to go with the pivot locks. I haven't tried. Uh, there's one other one out, I think, from Remet. Um, I've tried to reach out to them. They, they don't seem interested in working with me. Uh, so I can't check that one out unless I go buy it, which I don't really want to do. Uh, so anyway... Uh, the action is phenomenal. Uh, so you have what feels like a real detent on this. Now, that being said, I still wish it was slightly stronger, but I'm always going to say that, basically. Um, and I only say that because with the flipper, I can kind of fail it. Um, you know, either a stronger detent or I kind of wish they would have brought this tab up higher so it was kind of more like a Vero tab. So you could get it up at the top. Let me see if there's a example. Uh, here, the uh, jet stream. So you see how this is higher up? So because of that, I get more leverage. And essentially, even with a softer detent, which this doesn't have, it's got a good detent, I can fire that out easier. The downside, I guess, is you can do less kind of push buttony stuff. This one, you can be a little bit more push buttony. With this one, you have to deliberately pull back like that. If you pull in at all, you just get the, the blade hitting you because it's just the way it works. You have to pull down and out. So I get why they did it. I just kind of wish it was taller so that I could utilize a detent better. But once you know, it's easy to use. I've almost never failed it, uh, you know, after figuring it out. Um, but that's the flipper tab. The front flipper, it, I think, is really good. It does uh, suffer from the usual issue that everybody seems to not understand, and that is jimping. Just add jimping up and around the top. Make it tight and, and aggressive. I don't understand why nobody does that. Why do you leave these smooth areas up here? I just don't understand. Now, yeah, they're trying to tell you to go here. Go down a little bit. But I'm going right to that top area and firing it. And it works, luckily because this is uh, a black wash blade. I'd be a little concerned if this was satin uh, or stone washed in particular. Stone wash, yeah, I don't know, man. Um, I think you'll be fine, but I just wish they would add better jimping. Um, you can reach around it, but it's a little bit awkward. Uh, I haven't even tried the roll, there you go. You can do the rollback move and the front flip is really good. Works left-handed, right-handed, both-handed. 
And then you have the hole, which is obviously my favorite. You can reverse flick this thing like a champ. Uh, it is definitely dialed in for that one. And you can thumb flick it real nice. I love thumb flicking knives that don't have frame locks. Uh, if it's a frame lock, I suck at it. But reverse flick and thumb flick are excellent. You have this pear-shaped hole, which is big enough to get your finger in, giggity. And um, yeah, it works extremely well, I'll say. Left-handed reverse flick, no problem at all, guys. That's something that always gets me on button lock type knives because my index finger rests on the button. I depress it a little bit, that kills the detent, and then I kind of have to like fling it out. Well, with this, it just feels like a legit detent, and it fires. It feels really good. Then you have, obviously, the lock, which is sick. You just push the button, and she swings down. Yes, it has the traditional button lock bounce, so if you don't like that, you gotta let go uh, after it clears, and then you can shake it down. And it does feel more like a normal knife when you do that. Some button locks kind of feel weird when you, when you do that. But this just feels like a normal knife closing on a detent. It's nice. Uh, I don't do that. I do the bounce and let it close. You just hold it till it's done. And then you let go. It's easy. But if you want to like flick and flick, then you can flick. Then you have to throw it and let go. Right? Like throw it and let go so it closes. I'm not really good at it. Let's see if I can get it. Damn, Kev. All right, right-handed? All right, I can't do it. So I just let it bounce, right? Till it closes. So the lock is sick. The ergos are sick. I think the price point for materials and everything is really good. Um, I think the innovation here is phenomenal. That's where I think some of the other ones are just gimmicky. Some of the other pivot locks they're just doing spring lock. It's just a freaking button lock in the pivot. I don't, that does nothing for me. Honestly, it makes it worse, you know, being left-handed. This is an actual innovation. They developed a new lock. It has a magnet in there and a, and a bar and all this shit that's awesome. And it feels secure. It's not, it's not going anywhere. Um... Yeah, this is a very cool knife, guys. So this is the Vostid and Kilo. And uh, let me know what you guys think down below. We're going to have that cut footage and the batoning coming up right after this. Um, shout out to Vostid. Thank you again for letting me check this out. And uh, again, there's that link down there to the Kickstarter. If you're going to pick one up, you know, help your boy out. But up to you and uh i love you guys i truly do i'm gonna send this around my pass around group so all the other channels can check it out because this is definitely one they need to try and uh i hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic day and i'll catch you later peace hey guys kev here and i have the ankleo or ankilo from Vostid to do some testing. I want to mainly see how it does left-handed because if I choke up, you know, that button is right there and I can get a little bit of rock, but I can't really close it unless I attempt to. So I just want to see left-handed how, you know, how it works. Um, it's right-hand only clip, but if there's issues left-handed, then there's really no point in asking for an ambi clip. Right, so anyway, let's check it out. Got a little bit of cardboard here, just got to cut down so I can, uh, you know, slice it up. So I'm going to do the choke up grip just to get a feel for that. This is in uh, LMAX Steel from Bowler. And the choke up kind of feels weird with this cut, so I'm just I'm not going to do it just to do it, I guess. Cuts really well, that's for sure. I got one more here. Double walled on the corners. So, let's see here. I think I hit the choil there, so. 
It's just single wall cardboard, nothing crazy, but. I mean, it's going through it like butter. Feels great, honestly. So let's just try, I'm gonna pinch this a little bit and kind of try to get it stuck and rock it a little bit. I got a little bit of up and down because I'm putting pressure on the button, but I'm really trying to put pressure on the button. I normally would just be holding it like this, right? And I would put my thumb here and that kind of alleviates the pressure here, right? Because if I push down like this, maybe I could press that button, but really I would have my thumb here and my finger here and that kind of keeps that space open, if that makes sense. So I'm not really seeing where I would accidentally do that because for the most part, I would back off a little bit like this and have my thumb here and that button is, you can see it's exposed. So it's not like I'm gonna push it. So I really don't think that's actually a concern. Now, this is for standard, you know, I'm cutting some cardboard here. So maybe if you're out there whittling or something, you hold the knife like this, right? You hold it a little bit differently with your palm like this. And there I can, man, but I'm still, you know, and you're kind of, you have the flat right here. So you're kind of like locking the knife open yourself with your hand, right? So even if I push that down, which I can't, I can't get it all the way. I don't think it would close on me, man. I'm really trying. I can't. So like, I don't think it would close on you. Let's say you had the knife like this and you're holding that flat, right? your palm is gonna be up here, and it's literally gonna lock that blade in place. So I think it's pretty damn safe left-handed, but so let's just keep cutting. We got some uh, cardboard here. I love the blade shape on this. It's got a uh, sheep's foot blade, but it has nice belly. That's kind of my style, honestly. Um, I like a straight edge, but I always want a little bit of belly in there. Uh, so it's cutting through those pretty clean. Let's uh, let's cut a door out here. Really shitty door. Yeah, pops right out. So uh, I give it a solid, solid B plus on cardboard because you know it's not the thinnest geometry ever. It's really good though. Um, Try some rope and we'll do the zip ties because that's kind of been the test to see how the edge holds up for uh, some knives lately. So these are pretty, uh, it's pretty simple. The rope is really cheap rope from Lowe's or whatever. So, I mean, as long as you don't get caught in that choil, right, you're fine. Right here, it's going to slide up that belly and it's got a nice sharp edge. So it's gripping it and it's just gonna slice right through that. I mean, I can even climb up closer to the tip probably here. Yeah, still muscles right through it. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm barely trying to put pressure. Uh, some flat cuts on it. So this is where the belly on the sheep's foot comes in handy, where a flat knife, like let's say the nip here, when I go to cut this, I need to push down and then kind of slide it like this, right? I got to push to cut and slide almost flat. So that flat edge, I mean, this technically I think has the tiniest bit of belly, but this, because it has that belly on it, I don't need to go this far down. I can just kind of rock cut like that, boom. And it's excellent for that. You can just do some sawing. Come, that's kind of the move right there, I think. Come at the back here and then just drag through. Push down, drag through, push down, drag through, boom. Absolute money. A plus on the rope. Might save these for later. So this is the uh, easy zip tie to the one that hasn't caused any problems. And, oops, <laughs> maybe I went too fast. There we go. Cut right through. Let's 
try that one more time. The first one, I guess I just dragged right through. So push, pull. Okay. Ah, oh, okay. It basically cut it. All right, let's see the big boy. Let's see how it does. When I say big boy, I just mean this. For some reason, this zip tie gave the uh, axial fixed blade some trouble and it rolled the edge. Um, so let's see. Yeah, it's a little slick on the edge. So maybe they didn't put the toothiest edge on it. So I'm guessing this is going to slide out, but let's try. And I'm putting pressure right here, which is going to be kind of on that button. So this will be a double test. If this thing closes on my goddamn hand after. Ugh! Got it. And I slammed it right into the table after. So. Oh, yeah, she's clean. She's clean. Do one more. Just for posterity's sake. Okay. Okay, that time it slid out. But it almost cut it clean through. And there it is. So, I think this guy is a go on... Uh, zip ties, cardboard, rope, whatever you need. Um, we'll check the edge. Uh, and I'm going to go back to uh, the studio. And um, I'm doing this before the review so that I have the information for the review. So you guys will hear all about it. You'll see the edge and everything. So let me know what you guys think of the Bastide and Kilo. There's a link down below to the Kickstarter. It does help the channel if you guys use that link, if you're gonna pick one up anyway. And uh, what do I think, left-handed? I think it's perfectly fine. You're just not gonna have a lefty clip unless they decide to add that. So start complaining and maybe they'll do it for production. I don't think it would add much. You know, I wish they did a mill clip and then put a filler tab for lefty, boom, you'd be good to go or used this screw. Anyway, I'll talk about all that in the review. So, love you guys. Thank you. Peace. I forgot. Somebody asked me to try to baton with this to see how the lock holds up. Now, I don't know how far I want to go with this. This is like, I don't know if this is treated somehow. This is firewood that I bought at Lowe's. So, it's possible this is way denser than it normally should be for something like this. Um, and I really don't want to whack the spine. So, I'm going to try to just rig this but i'm gonna put it in here also guys if you're gonna baton just a just a tip here if you're gonna baton with a folding knife i honestly recommend that you unlock it so what you want to do is just place the knife like this right and don't have the the knife locked right so keep it like this and then start hammering. You could you could lock it out, hammer it once or twice to get it stuck in there, and then disengage the lock. Because if you're talking about a liner lock or a frame lock or something, you're really probably gonna damage something. And it's gonna fail along the way. So why, why break your knife when you could just have it unlocked? You're, all you need is the blade. That's what you're hammering through, right? You need the blade, and a little bit of control. So just a tip there. I learned that after I batoned the uh, riffle. Check that video out sometime. All right, let's see. Just gonna do a little bit here to see how she holds up. All right, fuck it. No issue at all. That lock was solid. No up and down or anything. Any issues? Nope. Everything looks perfect to me. So 
There you go. That is the bullshit baton test. <laughs> if you want to count it, you can. I hammered the shit out of it. Definitely beat up the spine a little bit. And uh, that lock felt tight, strong the whole way through. So this is something I think that could work when batoning. And you don't need to do that disengagement trick. But you can use any folding knife to baton. Just disengage the lock. All right. Anyway, there you go, guys. A little added bonus for you. Peace.